creating a folder structure and our users, we can now start creating our entries. Let's start by simply creating shared credentials. Let's pretend that Downhill Company allows you to use a single credential across your whole domain, so basically your user will have access to that credential. So let's go and edit, new entry, credential entry, username password, enter a name, username, domain if required, and enter the password. So this is a credential entry. It will appear under the folder I created. Now, let's create an RDP session for the domain controller and name it DC. The name will automatically be copied in the computer field. You can change it, but this is the default value. Now, rather than specifying the credential in here, I could be using a link to the credential entry I just created. But if you remember, Downhill allows me to use the same set of credentials for its whole domain. And in that case, I'll set the DC session to use inherited credentials. You'll see how all of this will work in a few moments. Now, let's create an Exchange Server session. I will simply use inherited credentials again. So you see, sessions under a folder, when you set them to use inherited credentials, it will go off the parent folder and will acquire the credential from there. That is why on the folder, in fact, you can assign a credential entry. Click on Group Properties to edit your group folder. In Credentials, select Credential Repository and then select your newly credential entry. Now, since my sessions are set to use inherited credential, it will use the credential that is tied to the top level folder. The session will go up its ancestor until it founds one with a credential value. Now, let's take a look at Telemark. That customer does not allow for a single credential across its whole domain. Therefore, we do not have a credential entry to share with its team, so we'll need to work around that. The mechanism is in fact related to the private vault. The private vault will allow you to create any type of entry, but is related to your user account. It is private to you and no one else can have access to it. Let's create a credential for David, the admin, and enter the username and the password. We can see here the credentials that is private to David since it's in your private vault. No one else will have access to it. So if I go back here for Telemark and create a DC session, but I can't have access to my private vault here because this would be shared with my whole team. So let's leave it at default, meaning that there's currently no credential linked to that session. The trick is to use the edit entry user specific settings to override the credential that is stored in that session. Remember that there is currently no credential set. Now, if you see that the menu is grayed out, verify if the allow user specific settings right is enabled. So, to set the credential on my session, activate the override credential and select the private vault credential entry. It will grant me access to my private vault and you will see I now have access to my David credential. Again, this is only for the currently login account, it is not shared at all. No one else in the system can double click on that session and have access to the David credential that was just linked to the session. Every user in the system must do the same steps. Go in the private vault, create the credential, and use the user specific settings overwrite at the session level. So if you have sessions using the inherited credential setting, they will work transparently using this mechanism. I now have sessions for my two customers. I have two methods of using credentials, one with a credential shared with its team and one without. Now, let's quickly create a few more entries in the internal infrastructure. The company does allow for sharing of credentials. So let's create a credential for King working at with Jammer and enter his password. So I have my credential entry. Now let's create our domain controller RDP session and link that session to the King credential. Let's play around with that and see how those permissions will apply to the data source. We will create another data source for our users. So let's click on the ellipsis and use the duplicate feature. Now let's change the user to Ted and enter his password. Let's do the same thing for Stephen King. Duplicate the data source, enter the username passwords, 
Now I have three data sources to show you how all those permissions work and what these users would see on their side. So let's take a look at what Ted would see. So Ted can view, add and edit in the downhill pro and telemark folder and doesn't have rights to see the Windjammer folder. So as you can see, I could edit or add a session here and I don't even see the Windjammer folder now. Now if I go and choose Steve, you'll notice that I can see the folder. I can launch a connection, but I can't modify any entries. The edit menu will simply be disabled and you'll notice that he also can see the Windjammer folder. If I switch to King, you'll notice that he only sees the Windjammer folder. He will be able to launch a session, but won't be able to edit or delete anything. Remember that it is extremely important to have permissions applied to your folder since everything that is not protected is deemed public. Therefore, everybody can use and edit those sessions. By simply adding permissions to your top-level folder, every new entry that is created under that folder will inherit all the same permissions and will be protected. Thank you for watching. You can find out more information on our website and join the discussion on our Devolutions forum.